Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, welcome to people from this. I see the, the British Consul General is here as well, very, or Consulate General is here. We're very, very lucky to have that. Um, and uh, great to see people from our seminar series, great to see people from our Kashmir Initiative, great to see people from Fletcher Tufts. Thank you all very, very much indeed for coming. Uh, if anybody's in a position like Jeff where they can't actually see what's going on, I suggest they maybe move their, <laughs> move their chair. Um, so this is an exciting moment for the program because to date, a lot of the talks, a lot of the seminars that we've run so far this semester with the CAR Center, Afghanistan Pakistan Initiative, have been done by internationals, by expatriates, talking about their views on tribes, on politics, on elections, on development. And here we have the first major event of the semester where we have an Afghan voice and a very powerful and important Afghan voice to reflect on issues connected to the Afghan justice sector, as well as having in the audience the first Afghan at Harvard Law School. So we have an Afghan lawyer in the audience too. So this is a good coming together of, of two different uh, sides of Afghanistan. So I'm hoping very much that this can be an opportunity for conversation. I'm also apologizing slightly because I may have to leave you after about 45 minutes to go to another class. Um, I am very, very hopeful that we can use this as an opportunity to reflect not just on the formal justice system, but also on the informal justice system and some of the great dilemmas which people are facing at the moment in Afghanistan. As you're aware, there's a huge debate happening in Afghanistan where Great enthusiasm led by Ambassador Holbrook and others for the informal justice system is coming up against the Supreme Court of Afghanistan, of which we have a very eminent uh, representative here today, who have tended to try to argue strongly that it would be very dangerous to give up on all the achievements in Afghanistan in terms of the formal justice system. So that's one of the great debates. Second debate, of course, about the relationship between what is largely a United States-led, an American-led, series of innovations in justice with the traditional religious or cultural values of Afghanistan itself and how those two things come together. And even better, Justice Saab has just come from a, an extended period in Colorado with the Supreme Court of Colorado, where the Ustad has been dealing with the Supreme Court of Colorado and perhaps could reflect a little bit about what he's learned both positively and negatively from that and also from his experiences in Spain, in Egypt, and in Ireland. On our way over, we were having a debate about whether Egypt or Ireland was closer to the Afghan model. Um, uh, so uh, without further ado, thank you very much indeed, and I'm going to hand over to you. And it's a great privilege to have Justice Abdul Rashid Rashid from the Supreme Court of Afghanistan here to speak to us today. Thank you. Dear students and the university, this great university professors, and uh, probably first of all, I will have uh, two or three pages I say about the legal system in Afghanistan comparatively to the legal system of the United States and some other legal relevant related points with the legal system of the United States and some Islamic or European countries. And this might be the, f the first part of the uh, um, discussion. The second part will be question and answers. And hopefully we will make that also to some extent helpful for the, our legal system and for you gentlemen who are Learn who are learning you know, law in this great university on the face of the earth. So, let me start with that. Is that yes. a good one? Thank you. Uh, up here or where is it? Where is the one That's up. That's up. Oh, 
if she's there over there, no, I'll, I'll do that. Title will be Islamic law within Islam. Hello, respected members of the Hayward faculty, students, and staff. Firstly, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to the esteemed audience here at the world renowned. Kennedy School of Government. I'm going to start off my talk with a more detailed explanation of the roots of the Afghan legal system and the current structure. I'll provide some background on the previous systems that were in place. And we'll end my discussion along with a question and answer section that will incorporate my personal experience over the course of the last 40 years dealing with Afghan legal, political, and social system. Islam is a religion presented to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Islamic law is the direction from God on how to conduct daily actions within the life of a Muslim. This includes social, economical, and political directives. These instructions and directives are a critical part of the daily life of a practicing Muslim. Islam came to be in an era when most of the Arabian Peninsula was, most of the Arabian Peninsula was not educated formally. Within the Islamic instruction, this community was doomed to be a state of ignorance. Commonly referred to as a jahiliya. Jahiliya is an Arabic word that means ignorance. They do not know anything, they could not read or study. Instructions from God have always come to mankind with, uh, with uh, the prophets in order to elevate mankind from the darkness of ignorance to the illumination of consciousness of their Lord. These instructions from God have always come in the form of laws and regulations in the holy books, which serve as the uh, premier source of heavenly knowledge. Altogether, these laws and regulations are known as modern Islamic law. Human beings have been provided specific and detailed instructions to abide by these laws and regulations to conduct themselves appropriately in their economic, social, and political lives. This is known as an Islamic jurisprudence. The Holy Quran is regarded as the last and final testament from God to mankind, and this is, the, this is something which every Muslim is required to believe. Wholeheartedly, Muslims similarly respect the Holy Bible. It was revealed to the Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. It was revealed to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, centuries before the, before by God and consisted of the same type of laws and regulations. 
is that followers of Christianity have faith and believe in the Holy Bible and its similar directives. Similar to the Muslim followers of the Christianity faith attempt to abide by the social, economical, and political instruction provided in the Holy Bible. Muslims the world over are expected to believe in the message brought by all the monotheistic prophets, including but not limited to Jesus and Moses, peace be upon them both. A Muslim who does not believe in the prophethood of previous messengers is not considered to be a Muslim. In most Muslim countries, throughout the world, this book, the Holy Quran, is used as the foundation for their modern political, social, economical system. And in Muslim countries where a man-made system of government is chosen, Islamic law is, still, the, still take it into serious consideration on a daily basis to make appropriate decisions which are befitting for the Muslim communities that live there. In Afghanistan, federal and local laws are based on Islamic fundamentals and the clarity provided by the Islamic jurisprudence for every aspect of social life. Mandates of the Holy Quran are used as the first and the foremost source for any and all judicial rulings. This Islamic foundation helps us to organize criminal, civil, commercial, narcotics, and traffic laws, as well as public safety and internal and external security laws. Criminal law in Afghanistan was formalized during the President Daoud's government in late 90s, late 1970s. And from that time, the law is being implemented by the purpose of making decisions at all levels of the judicial process. The internal system for commercial law and a fusion of methodologies implied in the European countries and most notably in Egypt. Therefore, we can safely assume that the implementation of criminal law in Afghanistan is a modern example for the comparative region. Due to this openness of our legal system, aspects of it can be found in the United States judicial system as well. Like first degree murder, manslaughter, intention, premeditation, deliberation, irreversibility of the law, inability to try a defendant for a law which no longer exists. These types of similarities can be found throughout the legal system, including traffic law, commercial law, and so on. In regard to the Afghan constitution, which now consists of 162 articles, and again bears a striking resemblance to the United States Constitution. The most important example of similarity in the division of the executive, legislative, and judiciary branch within the government. Specifically, Article 22 of the Constitution states that any kind of discrimination and distinction between the citizens of Afghanistan shall be forbidden. 
the citizens of Afghanistan, men and women, have equal rights and duties towards the law. Article 24 states that liberty is the natural right human beings. The rights has no limits unless this infringes on the freedom as well as the public interests, which shall be regulated by law. Liberty and human dignity are unviable. The state shall respect liberty as well as human dignity. Article 25 states that innocence is the original state and the accused shall be innocent until proven guilty by the order of an authoritative court. <laughs> Article 26 recognizes that crime is a personal act. Investigation, arrest, and detention of an accused as well penalty and execution shall not be incriminated a third party. Article 27 states that no committing, that no deed should be considered a crime unless ruled by law as such and promulgated prior to, the, to coming the crime. No one shall be punished without the decision of an authoritative court. In accordance with the provisions set forth by the law, laws which have been promulgated prior to the commitment of the offense, Article 21 states that torture and prosecution of human beings shall be forbidden. Hence, punishment contrary to human dignity is also forbidden. Article 30 states that a statement of confession or testimony obtained from accused or another individual by means of compulsion shall be considered invalid. Confession to a crime must be a voluntary admission before an authorized court by an accused of sound state of mind. Among the new articles, Article 31 states that upon arrest, every individual can appoint a defense attorney. And for those whom cannot afford an attorney, the court will, the court shall provide an attorney for them. The primary difference between the judicial system of the United States and Afghanistan as the reliance on the Holy Quran, while the United States relies mostly on statutory law. According to the legal system in Afghanistan, once a specific law is drafted, all courts within the country are required to rule by that update law. Customs, traditions have no place in the formal Afghanistan's legal system. While in some, in some informal provincial jurgas, there may be instances of non-compliance with the mandates handed down from Kabul in America, case law is a formalized process by which new laws are inducted into common usage. We are currently in the process of formalizing and implementing a similar process in Afghanistan and look forward to its successful completion and adoption. In commercial law, there are similarities between Afghanistan's and the United States as well as contracts, agreements, or similar as well 
with counter signature witnesses and notary process in place. In regards to the laws surrounding narcotic embezzlement or trafficking procedures and processes all follow the same prevalent in the United States. For instance, a file is created, a prosecutor, prosecutor is assigned, and indictment is made and sent to the courts. Meanwhile, witnesses are brought to the bar and defense is prepared for counter argument. The punishments associated with these infractions tend to be more severe than that seen in the United States with swift sentences of capital punishment handed between or handed down in order to deter such behavior in the young country. However, the trial procedure in Afghanistan is different from the United States, for instance, there is no jury system in Afghanistan, but the decision is made by a group of at least three judges, all whom are appropriately familiarized and familiar with the case and with the file. The cases of internal and external security have three categories of punishments. Three years imprisonment, from five to 15 years imprisonment, and life imprisonment or the capital punishment, which is the execution in an annihilation according to our law. Severity of criminal punishment is function of the crime committed. These sentences follow into one of, of the three buckets. First, a light punishment, which is from three years or less years imprisonment. A moderate punishment from three years to 15 years imprisonment or that was a moderate one. The, the last one is life imprisonment, which is from 20 years or capital punishment. According to our law, there are limitations to the punishments, which are a function of the condition of the guilty. Special consideration are made for the handicapped, elderly, and those who cooperate with the investigators and with the court. But in crimes of the terrorism to the state and to the allies, there are no such mercy considerations and accommodations made. Our legal system is, our legal system in Afghanistan is also different with respect to how we deal with the federal crimes. Namely, there is no system of federal courts to handle such issues, rather we attend the Supreme Court. The federal cases are tried by the experienced justices. These crimes fall under general ju jurisdiction for primary and appeal or Supreme Courts. The authority of the Afghan court is, the authority of Afghan court is greater than in the United States. For instance, a primary court in Afghanistan has a general jurisdiction authority, as does an appeal court, appeal court and a, a Supreme Court. Another difference between the Supreme Court and the United States is that the United States Supreme Court may not see more than 10 cases per year. However, in Afghanistan, a Supreme Court judge sees at least 300 cases per month. Afghanistan also does not 
does not have a circuit court system because of its general jurisdiction characteristics. According to our legal system, when the decision of an appeal court or high court is final, both of the claimants' parties have the right to object to the decisions through a formal petition to the High Judiciary Council of Afghanistan. The petition is considered by the High Judiciary Council and if the points raised by the claimants appears to be reasonable, then the High Judiciary Council will discuss and potentially dismiss the decision. The appeal court or the high court is then obligated to review the case from the beginning. The Constitution of Afghanistan has given authority to the Supreme Court to render a judgment or to make a decision about any kind of claim which is presented to the Supreme Court. Therefore, no other administrations, no other administration are provided within the authority to make a decision except the Supreme Court of Afghanistan. This is for the purpose of keeping judicial judgments constant and in accordance with the law of the land. All military cases have to be decided by the Supreme Court according to the new constitution of Afghanistan. The Defense Department no longer has jurisdiction to preside over the cases. According to the strategy of the Supreme Court justices, a legal committee is given the duty to summarize the final cases and the decision and to make a reference from those cases where proceedings can be used in the future is a doctrine of precedent. We did not have that system. And so far, we do not have it. But we are about to use from that uh, very important legal process in Afghanistan too. A committee is working very strongly on that. Hopefully, it will be uh, the, the project will be completed uh, during this year. And uh, for the next year, hopefully, it will be implemented and come as a legal uh, project and uh, will be given to the courts to implement that. Which that, that will be another very important point. The Supreme Court of Afghanistan hopefully will be succeeded and in the future. According to the same strategy, we have mandate laws which dictate the conduct, the behavior, and treatment by the justices towards claimants in a court. Afghanistan's new judicial conduct policy consists of 35 articles. Let me show you. All of these are in this brochure. Consists of 35 articles. I would like to discuss Article 32, uh, which states that high-ranking ju judges have to be proposed by the Supreme Court, then approved by the president, by the president of Afghanistan. The lower court, the lower ranking judges have to be approved by the chief justice. Of course, not only by the chief justice, mostly the um, uh, proposals have to be presented to the High Judiciary Council. First, the High Ju Judiciary Council accept and we sign it and later on, the, our honorable chief justice signs it, and then after that, uh, he, 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 he will approve it for the last um, time. Uh, so uh, as, you, uh, as I said, a group of high-ranking ranking judges has to be approved by, pres by the president, and lower than that, like the appeal courts uh, and the primary courts judges will be approved by the High Judiciary Council and will be uh, signed and uh, by uh, Chief Justice, that's all. Supreme Court justice or held, okay. Um, retirement condition benefits along with the punishment of judges is carried out in accordance with the uh, 
provisions of the law by the Supreme Court. One of the articles of judicial conduct states that when a judge is guilty of a treachery, the law has been broken and he or she shall be punished accordingly. Those actions can be categorized into six subsets. First, inappropriate conduct with the relevant parties involved in a case. That's the first. Second, inability to fulfill his or her responsibility towards the citizens of the country. The third, failure to implement the law within the capabilities defined by this position. Lack of an acceptable moral attitude. Fifth, lack of attention and focus on the appropriate handling of case, cases within his office. Sixth, lack of proper consideration of effective, effectively administered disciplines. Seventh, breach of the law as determined by the justices of the Supreme Court will result in an indictment by the Attorney General's office. This set of execution was discussed widely in the Barcelona, Spain in, 19, in 2007 when the Afghan Supreme Court judges lead by the Honorable Chief Justice of Afghanistan, Professor Azimi, that was the, the, uh, an, an international conference there. It was named Administrative Legal Conference. The members of the co conference previously supported this effort and were optimistic for the positive custom for, for outcomes it would, it would produce. By, by, the same, and it would, by the same token, last year in June, while I was the head of a group of senior Afghan judges, uh, I came to Colorado and I expressed my similar views to the high ranking judges over there. With a closed relationship between Afghanistan and the United States, which includes the United States, eight AID project liar, lawyers in the, rule, in the rule of law committee, we have been able to make great strides and advancements within the judicial and legal sector. Topics uh, from process to development scope in our authoritative reach have been mutually addressed and continue to be improved upon. We are bringing new ideas to the table which make it easier and to the courts and to make the decisions. When presented with less than complete information as would be expected within a post-conflict environment like Afghanistan. The rule of law committee of the United States in Afghanistan is extremely helpful to the court system of Afghanistan and is preparing necessary legal documents and materials to help in development and scalable management of the multitude of court cases which are brought, brought up for the review. Publications of legal materials and the dissemination of factual cases through the legal committee are yet another value added asset that Afghanistan receives from the rule of law committee there in Kabul. As this policy of cooperation continues, an ability to handle judgments and rulings by the judges according to the laws of Afghanistan develop the domestic and international community will be will be able to put greater faith in Afghanistan's self-reliance and the ability to the domestic judicial system to handle 
any and all cases within which may be brought to, to, to the bar. No other legal organ has suffered badly as much the Supreme Court of Afghanistan has suffered from the 30 war in the country was going on. Afghanistan has made multiple transitions in the years after Daoud presidency. During his regime, there was no democratic system. Justices were selected directly by the president. And today we see that the democratically elected government has no carried over his practice into the judicial sector and allows for Supreme Court justices to be elected and appointed by the members of Congress. During the reign of, of President Daoud in the 1970s, the military courts were under the control of the Department of Defense. But now, the military courts are un working under the authority of the Supreme Court. There was, there was one court during the time of the Ministry of the, um, 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 uh, during the, um, uh, the Ministry of Defense during the time of presidency of, of President Daoud. But now there are three steps, three types of the courts established. Those types are the primary courts, the appeal court, and the high court, which is called Supreme Court. Also given current circumstances in the rise of drug and narcotic trafficking in Afghanistan, then there has been established a separate special court to deal with the drug trafficking issues alone. Another major sector of change has been the system of training of the future judges during the years that I was in the training. There was no transition period between ending school and the getting appointed to the bench. The system was not set up to follow trainees and never younger judges mm, to have practical experience before being appointed. Currently, all judges from both the Kabul, the Kabul Faculty of Law and the Kabul Faculty of Islamic Law schools are mandating that all candidates for any judicial bench be in a two years comprehensive practicum that allows them a high level of experience at within the courts and with, uh, with mentors to the understand and to understand uh, the practical aspects of becoming a judge. The graduates are able to experience the different sectors of our judicial system and are exposed to different areas of the country where, the, where mm, they are able to learn the importance of the diversity of our country. In the meanwhile, as a post-war country, as a government, as a member of the United of the uh, High Judicial Council body or is a United States citizen. I appreciate the assistance thus far provided and look forward to the day when we, we can all look a self re, re, um, reliant and fully functioning country in Afghanistan. Look back and know that we contribute and aided in the assistance of many people in the development of a system which will continue to, 
to empower its citizenry towards the towards it while appropriately regulating adjudicating matters which impact the personal social and political lives of so many at the end i thank you all for your time and attention good morning So th this should be a very, very interesting opportunity for a debate and a discussion, and I very much want to encourage you to come forward. This has been a fascinating uh, discussion, I think, because normally we have a sense of, I suppose, crisis in Afghanistan. Everybody filled full of a sense of political turmoil, full-spectrum operations, people taking a comprehensive responsibility for dealing with the crisis. And here we have a member of the Afghan Supreme Court giving a uh, more focused, more specialized account of legal situations and legal changes, the assistance provided by the US government through the rule of law program, the ways in which the Afghan constitution have adjusted to notions of human rights. So this, of course, connects also to the Carr Center's mission in human rights, in particular the statements on torture, uh, liberty, due process, and innocence. But what I hope we can bring forward in the discussion and draw on some of you in the room are also some of the contextual issues. I mean, we've heard today quite a lot about the theoretical issues in Afghan law, talked about the legal system and the constitution, talked at the beginning of some of the difficult conceptual issues which underlay the Afghan constitution, the legal system in the first place. What is, for example, the balance between Sharia law the law of God and the law of man. How does that impact on Afghanistan's decision not to have a jury system, which is one of the central things that the Supreme Court Justice described? What is the basis of the legitimacy of the government of the legal system? Is it actually founded in God and God's laws, or is it founded in the vote of the people? Separation of powers we talked about, maybe also some of the issues of absence, some of those issues in Afghan law which haven't fully developed try to get Jeff perhaps to talk a little bit about intellectual property in relation to this, which of course has developmental impacts. I mean, this isn't simply abstract legal theory. In IP law, intellectual property law, is very important in terms of development of any kind of market system or in terms of mortgages or the release of capital for Afghan people, often very poor people. It is of course also an example in relation to our whole seminar series of intervention in general, right? This is a massive program, this USAID rule of law program, hundreds of millions of dollars, thousands of American lawyers flying over to the United States, Supreme Court justices coming to Colorado, the Irish calling people over, the Spanish calling people over, the Egyptians getting involved in the game, the Turks getting involved in the game. So it's a, a symbol of these extraordinary international interventions. Justice having been something originally led by Italians, but of course it's not just about justice, it's about the entire legal system, what's happening with the policing, what's happening with the prisons, right? We've had escapes from prisons, Kandahar prison where all the prisoners left, Pulichaki prison where 13 prisoners left and then 12 of them were executed and one of them got away, all the relationships towards insurgency. So the Supreme Court Justice has talked about the formal Afghan legal system, but at the same time, there are other movements in Afghan society. One of the major threats to the legitimacy of the Karzai administration is about justice, it's about law. Again and again, Afghans, in explaining why they're supporting the Taliban, say it's because we don't get justice. We're going to Taliban courts because they're quicker, they're more reliable, they're less corrupt. It connects also to subjects of counter-narcotics. Nothing has corrupted the Afghan system more than the fact that Afghanistan produces 92% of the world's opium, 92% of the world's heroin, and therefore all the money swilling around in the system that comes out of that Supreme Court justice talked about the creation of separate narcotic courts. Policing a highly predatory and corrupt police system. Very, very minimal trust in the police system. Tribal jurgers. This is something maybe Justina can talk to a little bit about the emergence of traditional justice as a threat to the formal constitutional legal system. 
And all of that in terms of the sustainability of the system. How can capacity building operate in a situation in which maybe 20 or 30 percent of the country is out of the control of the central government? So I'm going to hand back to the Supreme Court Justice to try to address some of these. But before we do that, I just want to give a chance to some of you in the audience, perhaps, to share and I'm talking briefly, maybe if I can be very uh, cheeky, maybe 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes of insights from some of you in the audience, Afghan or others who've worked in the justice sector, perhaps to draw out some of the things which you thought were important in the Supreme Court Justice's speech, and maybe we can bring that back into the conversation. So I'm going to begin with Jeff. I'm just going to keep, keep running around. Saik, do you have anything that you'd like to share or any thoughts? Uh, or? Okay. All right. Um, Justina, any thoughts or contributions? Thank you for the question. Uh, probably I have referred in, in my essay on one, one point, what, which was the main point of our legal system in Afghanistan. During the past years, to the best of my knowledge from the beginning, from the time I was a kid until the time the democratic system has come to Afghanistan, the military courts were namely a military courts under the control of Ministry of Defense. But now, fortunately, under the democratic condition system, we've cut the military courts assessment from the mi Ministry of Defense or the Demis Defense Department and joined it to the Supreme Court of Afghanistan. Why? Because the system is democratic. Under the democratic system in the country, all the courts should be under the control of one Supreme Court, as it is here in the United States. Most of our judges uh, are, in fact, experienced and trained in the United States, and we are familiar with the system here in the United States. That's the point it was raised at the time of the drafting Constitution of Afghanistan, and they accepted that the, all of the military cases, criminal cases, should move from the Ministry of Defense and come to the Supreme Court of Afghanistan, and it should be decided by the uh, Afghan judges, whether it's in the process of the uh, preliminary court or in the process of uh, appeal courts or the process of Supreme Court. That's one of the uh, main ideas and decisions which successfully has been made. At the time, four years before, while we were approved by the Congress of Afghanistan, we went to the Supreme Court, we did not have that system. Still, the courts were under the control of them. Then we raised 
that question and discuss it in the High Judiciary Council, that we decided a legal decision according to the Constitution of Afghanistan is the military should shift from the Ministry of Defense, come to the, under the control of the uh, High Judiciary Council. That has been fortunately done. And also, at the time, the military, military courts were uh, belonged to the Ministry of Defense. There was only one court, not three steps of the court, like primary appeals in the last. Now we are dealing with those uh, uh, criminals, military criminals, and they do have the same right as the ordinary people uh, come by their cases to the Supreme Court Afghanistan. I mean three steps, first step, primary court, second step, appeal court, and the last step, the Supreme Court. This is the most important um, uh, uh, change uh, has, um, that has been brought by our new uh, constitution and we put it in practice and we succeeded. Um, you're, you're on it, sorry. Yeah. Just, just to follow up a little bit. Um, there's a big debate now with uh, traditional justice, right? Oh. So okay. Ambassador there. Holbrook putting a lot of, j just to explain it, uh, there's a huge amount of money and energy going in in Afghanistan. For those of you who aren't yeah. focused full-time in Afghanistan, money going into traditional justice, people interested in tribal justice, people interested in village justice, what is your view on this? What's your opinion on yeah. this? Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I'm the one, I'm standing in front of you, I'm the one who has raised this question at the time, the point or the, uh, that that problem was being discussed in our legal system, in some uh, especially meetings between the Ministry of Justice in the Attorney General's office and Supreme Court. Uh, I objected that the report which was presented by those who had worked on that report, I could not find it reasonable and accurate. The report was saying 80% of the cases have been sent to the rural jurgas and they make the decision. And 20% are being sent to the Supreme Court and are made by the those decision. While not I was reversing the case or are denying, I showed, I showed the practical work of first year of the Supreme Court. The first year of Supreme Court while we were uh, uh, being approved by Congress and came to the office, nine members of the Supreme Court, every one of them, every department, was taking action in solving the cases and the problems had been joined together in the offices. For example, only me, I finished around 3,000 cases in six months time. That were remained from before. No, now you can add those nine uh, Supreme Court, uh, eight in Supreme Court judges work, which is every one of us at least work from 3,000 to 5,000. The total number reached in six months to 30,000 cases. 30,000 cases in six months. I, th does that, that, that mean 80% of the cases go to the rural jurgas? While what is the, the outcome of rural cases? In rural cases, we, I could not find more than 100 cases. We do have the system of rural cases, but not all over Afghanistan. We do have rural Jurga's decision on those provinces which are located on the border, like Kandahar, like Paktia, like Khus, like Zabul, like Jalalabad. We do not have rural Jurga's in the northern part of the country, which I belong to that. I'm from Baghlan. We do not have rural Jurga's. We do have rural Jurga's in some cases in case the, 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 the point of the discussion should be discussed with the courts over there. If the point is discussed with the court, then that rural jurga turns to be an official decision of the, of the, uh, the court. Rural jurgas are totally in the rural areas. We do have, there are some, but 
the, the nature of that jurgas are just talking about a case in solving according to, to their own traditions. If they want to officialize, to put it in an official system, it has to be sent to the court over there, which is located, and the court has to approve it. We, we do not have even one cases from rural jurgas to be approved to, from by our uh, court system in Afghanistan. How did that, the gentleman who reported that, from where he, he, f he found that, that contrary in unrealistic numbers, 80,000 80, cases go to real, uh, rural jurgas and 20 comes to us. If that's the case, so every, every day we will have uh, face 100,000 cases to the course of Afghanistan, which is totally irreasonable. Can we um, discuss this in our Supreme Court just high ju ju judiciary council? And everybody was amazed. And we in finally asked those gentlemen who had written the, um, the, re the report, and we asked them to the high, high ju judiciary council, please show me how many cases have you collected to show us? He said, nothing. So from where did you get the idea? Well, just the people are saying, that's not the real research. A real research should be according to the facts and realities. Facts and realities in the outcome should be officially recognized. That nothing is officially recognized. You just want to add another darkness point on our legal system, which was really, um, everybody was, was <coughs> totally disappointed about that. Then we discussed that in front of president. We said, that report is totally wrong. That report is totally rubbish. We do not have even 10 cases in Afghanistan to have been um, uh, referred to the rural jurgas and they have decided. While right now, officially, we do have 50,000 cases have been decided by our Supreme Court justices and judges. So how you can, can you confer nothing with everything? So after that, the president said, okay, otherwise we are about to, 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 to sue him to punish him according to the law because he was making a wrong propaganda against, against the country. Even first of all, I told him, well, I haven't come for that purpose. Somebody will make a propaganda in doing against me while I am doing my job according to the <coughs> my conscience, according to my faith, according to my, my, my right decision. And somebody is making propaganda in a re re writing something which is out of, of reasonable writing. Why should be like that? Then after that, he escaped from the country. The gentleman, he, was, he, he came from London. He was belonged to a group, and he escaped from the country because he was scared not to, be, <laughs> not, not to be sued. Fortunately, we do not have that process right now. Nobody is, 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 is <coughs> deterring our legal system. We are working, fortunately, on the right time, on the right track, with the right mind and right decision. Personally, believe me, by God, believe me, by God, I haven't been back to Afghanistan to cheat people, to take bribe, or to benefit from the, 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 the help which are coming uh, to build up the country in Afghanistan. Believe me, where should I live? Do you think I live in a hotel? I do not have a house. I do not have one acre. My, my wife is right here in front of me. My daughter is right here in front of me. All of my kids, fortunately, are educated. I've got four Berkeley graduate kids, and I'm proud of them, and I'm proud of my wife because she has prepared them to follow up their education. I haven't been back to Afghanistan to collect money. I come to, back to, to the United States to visit my family and my kids for my own money. I get the privilege of a minister probably between $2,000 and $3,000. But I pay half of them to the hotel, which is $1,500. In fact, I'm doing for nothing. But the main objective is to help the government, to help the country, to reconstruct the, the country, to be helpful for the legal system, because I was educated in Afghanistan. I was rich regarding to the information and knowledge and experience during, during my lifetime. First of all, I was a prosecutor. Then I, I was a, uh, a, a <coughs> primary court judge. Then I was an appeal court judge. Then after that, I was president of the secretariat for the Supreme Court of Afghanistan. Then came to the United States and my, my, uh, I educated, I learned, and I got my legal education here in, in this country, in this beautiful country. And, and otherwise, before that, I was not trained. I, I, I did not do one word English language, one word of that. The language which I, I was following at the time of my 
legal education in Afghanistan that was Arabic language. And it turned from the Arabic language came to the English language. Unfortunately, to some extent, I did it. And I solved my problem. And I followed that the legal language of the United States comparatively with, with our legal system in Afghanistan. And I feel shame if I'm not sharing the, to solve the problem in Afghanistan. I've been back under that kind of. I, I, I will not give anybody, and, and I challenge anybody in, my, in Afghanistan to find very, very simple mistake in my, in my work. Believe me by God. Whenever I have visited an Afghan, he has appreciated my job. I've respected Afghans because they, they've been tortured. And they have been uh, badly um, uh, face to face with, with the previous government official. Well, that, that was my, my personal job and I have completed. But the point which you raised, really, that was extremely dangerous for us. Unfortunately, we solved it. There is no more anybody who will do that kind of wrong research against the, the, the um, court system in Afghanistan. Right now, if you ask, we can give it, give it to you the whole number of the cases which are coming to the courts every day. Every day, right now in Afghanistan, you will find cases are referred to the primary courts or to the appeal courts between 100,000 and 100,020 cases. 100,000 cases are a lot. And you cannot find even one case to be approved by, by rural jurgas. One case you cannot find. We do have the system. Here, here, here in the United States, if two brothers are having a problem, two brothers are sitting between themselves and solve their problem without going to the court. That system is everywhere, all over the world. If you can solve a problem in, uh, uh, in your household or in your um, 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 county or in your city, and why should be to the court? There is no need you should, be, you should go to the court. That's the same system in Afghanistan. And we do not have that system except in four uh, uh, provinces, which is the, uh, the Kandar province, and Zabal province, Khost province, Pakya province, that's all. And these, these, these rural jirgas are in the Pashtuns area. I'm a Pashtun. I haven't seen a, 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 such a case in my life, in my judicial time. Believe me, I haven't seen it. Why? Because they do not come normally to, to, to the courts. They, dis, they solve the problem, then after that they come give us the report. Then we register it, that the problem is solved between that family, that's the legal system. Um, I just wanted to say something along that in case you didn't hear it from the other speakers, but I'm sure we can. Very, no problem, um, okay. Exactly, that's um, correct. Can I, can I actually take a couple more questions? There was one at the back, please, yeah. Okay, um, let's just quickly pick up a couple more. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to know more about this mechanism you talked about. About what? Uh, about the mechanism. Mechanism, okay. Because there are so many different ways to negotiate with the court and get through and so that the court gets to know about it. So would you speak to the process of how would you get to the court and how would you talk to them about the certain process to negotiate with the court? Is it like a lawyer taking you to a court system or how does that work? 
Okay, very good. I, I will explain about that. Okay. First off, yeah, sorry, I'm just going to, yeah, we'd, sorry, when then we'll let you, yeah, yeah go. Uh, well, uh, I explained that those jurgas are rural jurgas. Those jurgas are being officially recognized by those villages and cities who are living in that condition. What is the reason why the Jews can live in such a condition? Well, uh, well, well, in Pakistan. And c can we? Can I just sorry, j just quickly? So, uh, so um, I think there are probably three different questions here, just to, to summarize. So we had a, a question about the fit between the rural jurgas and the formal system. Oh, yeah. We, we had a, a question which related to the caseload and whether the Taliban had come. Yeah, that's right. And we had a question on the mechanism of um, judicial yeah, investigation. Uh, so very good. Yeah. Uh, let me start yeah. with yeah. the gentleman who asked me first. The the construction of our ju judicial system is we've got three pr processes in the court, preliminary court, appeal courts, and the Supreme Court. And uh, from the step of preliminary court, uh, if we start a case, preliminary court has the authority to make its decision over any kind of case is related or sent to the court. Or the cases uh, being investigated by prosecutors, the criminal cases or civil cases have been taken to the court. That's the, uh, the, prelim the, the primary course in Afghanistan has got a general jurisdiction, not a limited jurisdiction. W how is the, that work? Uh, a primary court has got several other offices under his um, uh, um, uh, authority, for example, a primary court has got a criminal section, a civil section, a commercial section, and uh, a, a narcotic section, and an international, uh, internal and ex external security section. Um, uh, so all of these sections are in a separate departments. And the head of every department is one judge at least one from one to two judges, and it reached to three judges. All of these departments are working under the chairmanship of one um, uh, primary court. So that's the nature of the um, uh, um, judgment in Afghanistan, and uh, that uh, that's the nature of the system of judgment in our country from the time I know. That's our legal system in Afghanistan. This type of division is, uh, is not um, uh, something um, familiar with the system of the United States. Because first of all, uh, here in the United States, you do have different kind other courts. Administrative courts, the courts in mayor, the courts for the uh, trafficking violation, separate courts are all. Here, in the, there, uh, in the, in, uh, where I am living in, uh, in, in California, that's the system. Well, uh, while I have done my practical training here in G G G Washington, um, uh, uh, suburbs and, and areas, that's the nature of this country. Here it, you can find by any mm, case, a separate case, a separate court. A separate court has got its own uh, authority and, and has to decide about that case. But this is not the way in Afghanistan. In a way, all of the claims, all kind of claims, jointly has to be sent to the primary court. Then the court, the dis distinction is up to the court. He will analyze if he sees that's a criminal case. He'll give it to the section of criminal um, uh, section. If it's the civil case, he will give it to the section. If it's a traffic violation, it will give it to the traffic law. If it's the, the narcotic and drugs kind of um, um, case, it will give it to the, the, the same kind of. So, th so that the, the nature of judgment in Afghanistan is considered to be a general ju jurisdiction. But here in the United States, you cannot find that way.
is, is uh, it's to totally different. Is the organization is totally different. And similarity, yes, there are similarities between the legal system here in Afghanistan, here in the United States. And then, as I mentioned, some of them very legally, for example, in a contract, for example, in a cr criminal decision. The criminal decision, uh, you, you find intention, premeditation, and, uh, and, and uh, deliberation. They are the same element in our uh, criminal law, which I, I've got it right here. And this is our uh, criminal law. And this is the, uh, our criminal procedure. So that's the nature of our uh, judgment in Afghanistan. I hope I can, uh, uh, I'm answering your question. Uh, yeah, could you repeat one second? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. okay. I got you. I got you. Um, for example, if the case is corruption, the corruption is normally referred to the government employees. If the, if the government employees are involved, then the case comes to the court, the court has to decide. If the, if the corruption refers to the uh, government employees, uh, not uh, to, to, to the rural is, is, is the crime is committed by the rural people, then that case has to be first sent to the, uh, to the, to, to the administration. The administration analyzes the case. If the, if the case is considered to be a criminal case, then that case is sent to the Attorney General's office. Attorney General will analyze it. If he finds some, some issues, some points and that, uh, to raise and send it to the court, then it comes to the court. So uh, that's the, the, the nature of distinc distinction of the cases in Afghanistan. Did I, did I answer your question fully? Good. Yeah, the behavior of the judge is totally something else. If you, co if, if you got a complaint about the behavior, behavior of a judge, uh, that then, you, and then you are raising the question. And you, you've got to, uh, to prove it. Because you are the, 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 the claimant. And uh, you, you, you've read the question. Anything is raised by, some, by anybody who is the, the burden of responsibility to bring the, uh, enough reasons for the court, the court should believe it. That part of the, of, the, of the law is exactly the same law which is in the United States. Whoever raises a question, he wants something, he has to prove it. He should bring the, the burden of proof and then show it to the court. That's exactly the same, not, not different. But the, 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 the um, corruption cases are in Afghanistan um, uh, a lot. Uh, for example, so far, believe me, uh, I, I, let me give you a number. Uh, during the time of President Daoud and after the time of President Daoud for almost one or two years, I was uh, president of the Secretariat of the Supreme Court. We did not have more than five or ten cases of corruption. But now, from the time we've started our own job, we've captured 120 judges and prosecuted them and condemned them, some of them in one year prison, two years prison, three years prison. That's totally a great number in the whole face of the world. If you ask any country, have you arrested 20 judges for corruption? Nobody will tell you if you, if you go to the court. Now we did it for sure, we did it for sure. And some, 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 some of um, uh, authorities, some of the officers, some of the people object us, but we have to. That this, this, this country requires to be cleaned from the corrupt people. And the corrupt people are not ordinary people. They are those judges who have created, trained them. And they are, they are getting um, enough salaries in comparison to the salary of the, uh, those other officers from the government. Yes, what did you say? Say, please, yeah. One point is different. Here in the United States, you will find uh, two kind of organization. One is the, uh, the state system, one is the federal system. When a crime is considered to be a federal crime, it has to be decided by federal judges. When a crime is considered a state crime, 
has to be considered by the states. That type of division do, uh, does not exist in Afghanistan. Yeah, we do not have that, that, kind, that uh, organization. Both of the cases has to be sent to the court. Court, court has got two, two, uh, two departments for that. One is um, he decides about the, um, that type of the cases which are considered to be a federal c crime here in the United States. We also, our judges are also, uh, we have got the same way. And the court is, in the cases uh, similar to the federal case which has been uh, 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 discussed here in, in the United States. But in Afghanistan, that federal and state crime are being decided under the control of one judge. Of course, in a di different department. So uh, this is the uh, difference between the, our system in Afghanistan and the United States. Otherwise, the cases are the same. Correct. That, correct. But no. please, last, last question. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah, I got you. No, 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 the whole system, no. The whole system will not be that. We've got, for every crime, special uh, punishment in the law. You see? For example, uh, uh, let's discuss the point of terrorism. Terrorism in Afghanistan, 30 years before, I remember while I was a student in law school at George Washington University, I was speaking in a seminar. Somebody asked me, how is the terrorism in Afghanistan? My answer was, we do not have terrorism in Afghanistan. And then he again asked me, how is the kidnap in Afghanistan? My answer was, we do not have a kidnap in Afghanistan. <laughs> but now, no, what is now? What's going on now? We are the only country, the highest country from the crime, um, uh, regarding to the crime in Afghanistan, the high number of the crime, terrorism, terroristic crime are in Afghanistan. You see from 30 years time, that's the difference. And the, 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 the terrorism or the terroristic cases are coming to, to the court. The court has decided about that. We did not have even the law, but now, right now, we do have the law. We have organized the law. That law, the, the law which is covering the um, um, uh, terrorism crimes, we, uh, does not relate to anything by, by any means with the Islamic law. That's a civil law. That's a statu statutory law. That's very close to the same law which is now uh, being um, put in practice here in the United States, even in the same European countries, in, even in some Islamic countries. So, so that there are similarities between the legal system of every country with its neighbors and every country in the whole world because the laws have been assigned or designed either copied from the next country, neighboring country, from a, a country who's uh, got an uh, uh, improved system or by another mean which is the experience of the people. So that the legal system of the whole world are, are very close to each other. They are not very, if you see, read it comparatively, so that, that it will appear to be very clear. So that was my, my uh, studies during the time I was comparing the legal system of Afghanistan, even with the Islamic law. Even with the, we, uh, let's uh, uh, compare it with the Islamic law. For example, what is the punishment of, a, of someone who kills someone? No, you see? Yeah. That's correct. Not exactly. 
100% is not that way. Some of the uh, articles are maybe under the influence of Islamic law and Sharia law. Some of them are not. Because the legal system of Egypt even if is, is very, very good legal system. And of course, the points who are under the control of, of Sharia law. And that's not exactly the same. For example, while, while in, in Saudi Arabia, they cut the hands of thieves. If somebody steals, they cut the hand. But we do not cut the hand in Afghanistan. We made it a little bit swift, uh, 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 softer. And we, we, we've changed that way because that's the need of the country. That's the need of the people in, in a country, not to be very harsh about it. There is uh, annihilation and uh, um, retaliation in a country, in an um, Islamic country. That's correct. We believe it. Right now, we do have it. We do have it in our um, um, uh, in the, uh, in the terrorism area. We do have like that. Suppose somebody has entered the house. He, he has killed the one or two members of the house. And after that, he has m uh, done another bad connection with a girl. So what should the judge do regarding to that? That, that type of, of people are, are, are um, um, uh, to be punished. How do you punish? Do you punish in five years imprisonment? In 10 years imprisonment? If you, if you say 10 years or, or 12 years, would, would, uh, is that reasonable? Is that just? No. If you've killed somebody, you should be killed. Because you've decided at the beginning. You've prepared the situation for killing. You've prepared the situation to enter a house and to, to kill somebody and to get the money from that house. So w w what is the appropriate punishment for that? Islam says, well, you've killed, you should be killed. So that, that's the legal system in our country, but in some other areas, and we are, we've, we've changed it from the harshest way to the a little bit softest way. So that's the legal system everywhere in some Islamic countries. For example, in the United States, in some states, they do have punishment. They do have um, 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 uh, annihilation and, and, and um, retaliation. In some other states, they do not. In Afghanistan, we do have one system. We do have on the 32 states the same system. That's the, the, our nature of the law. Well, yes. um, we're now very sadly coming to the end. There will be tea and cookies for everybody and a chance to talk informally to the Supreme Court Justice over some tea and cookies. Um, thank you very, very much indeed for coming. Just as the takeaway, before you put on your jackets and leave, I think this is a very, very interesting moment. It's an interesting moment in this seminar series because this is not just an opportunity to hear about Afghan law. It's an opportunity to see an acting, living, thinking Afghan lawyer. Right? This is a member of the Supreme Court. It's the Supreme Court Justice. What is being played out today in front of you is his thought processes, his cultural references, his views on capital punishment, his assumptions about Islam, the ways in which he relates to United States legal training, the way in which he relates to Egypt, the way in which he's dealt with some of the issues that have been raised in terms of traditional, traditional local jerga justice. His horror at the idea that these traditional justice systems might be incorporated into the formal processes. So along with the formal statement of legal theory, you have here a sense both of the anthropology of law on the ground, but also the intense political struggles which are taking place in Afghanistan at the moment about the meaning of the state, the meaning of governance, the meaning of the legal system, partly driven by corruption, partly driven by insurgency, and driven above all by the creation of a narrative of national identity. So for all this, thank you very, very much indeed to our Supreme Court Justice, Abdul Rashid Rashid, and thank you all very much indeed for coming, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.